and look at some more data entry technique. So we're going to jump over to the book, and I'll show you the next chapter talks about data entry. We're going to go through and do some autocomplete, some pick from drop-down lists, some tabbing color, some entering text, and we're going to go through a few commands here to do that. And then we're going to get down into some keyboard commands down below here, and we're going to start talking about some of the keyboard commands. So let's start with a new blank file. There's three ways to create a new blank file. If you go to File, New, blank this way. You can also click on the little blank icon on top if you have that up there. And the third way to do it would be the keyboard command called Control and press the N as in Nancy. And that creates a new blank file. So either way, we want to start with a new blank file. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see my screen a little bit better. And we're going to do some data entry techniques. And so we're just going to click in A1 and I'm going to type, just start typing some names. Actually, I'll do it A2. So I'm going to type some names, and we're going to show you some autocomplete features and some pick from drop-down lists and various things like that. So I'm going to type the word Tom, the enter key. Type Jim, Jack, Jane, and just type in a few names. Actually, I don't want to do Jack and Jane. I want to do different names. I'll do Hank, and I'll do maybe Debbie. I'm going to try to put in different different letters here. So the idea of that is I want to type in Tom, then this is something people figure out pretty quickly. But if you didn't know it, then this would be useful to know about. If I type the letter T, then it auto-completes Tom. If I want to type in Tom again, I just the enter key and I accept Tom. But if I want to type Tim, I type T and Tom comes up. So I just keep typing and I just type Tim. Now I want to do Tom again. So I type the letter T for Tom, and it doesn't come up, because why? There's two T's, because there's a Tom and a Tim. So it doesn't know which one I want. So the autocomplete feature is really great if you have a very short list. But when your list gets really, really long, then it becomes kind of useless, because you've got to type so many letters to find a match. In that case, you go down to the blank cell below it here. You right-click on that blank cell. And you use this option called Pick From Dropdown List. And what that does is it gives you a unique list of items. to See, now Tom is not listed twice in here, only once. So if I want to do Hank, I click on Hank. If I right-click again, I go to Pick From Dropdown List, and I want to do Tim, I can do Tim. So this list, this autocomplete feature is nice, but it's good for a short list. Now, if I'm going to do repeating labels, if I type the word Boston and I type New York and I want to repeat those labels down, then this is where the autocomplete feature works really well. I can autocomplete things very quickly. But if you got so many repeating words in there like names, then it becomes kind of useless. And I really don't want to type things in twice. I want to type it in one time and use what I typed in before rather than have to just type it twice. I want to use whatever shortcut I could use to accomplish this. And we're going to talk about some data entry techniques. So what I want to do is I want to select five cells like this. And I want to highlight those cells. I'm taking my hand off of the mouse, and I'm going to simply just start typing. The purpose of this is that if I have 20 items to type in, I want to know that I've typed in those 20 items. So I'm going to simply go to my select five cells, take my hand completely off the mouse, go straight to the keyboard, and start typing a list of names. There's my name, there's another name, another name. And you see as I type the names and I keep hitting the enter key, it scrolls back through the list, you see? It won't let me go beyond that selected area. And the idea of that, if I have 20 items to type in, then I would select 20 cells, and I'd start typing. When I got down to the last cell, I should be on the last value on my list that I'm typing in. If I'm not, then I made a mistake. So that is where that kind of comes into play. Now I can select another area like this and start typing in that one. I can start typing that, and when I'm done, I can go through and look for that. Now, here's another thing you want to do is that you keep hitting the enter key 
it scrolls back through the list. So I might want to go back and check myself. So what I'll do is I'll go to my list and I'll use my enter key and I'll look at my list and I'll check, check, check. And as I keep checking through it, I can hit the return key so I can keep track of where I'm at. Now what usually happens when you're in the middle of doing something like this, what usually happens? You get a phone call. Somebody walks in your office. You know what I mean? So these things get you get interrupted a lot. So you come back from your phone call or your visit, and you go, now, where was I? You look at your screen, and you go, oh, that's where I left off right there. If you don't know where you left off, what are you going to do? You're going to start over. But now we know exactly where we left off. We can pick up from that point and continue on. So the idea of that, this is just something that I've never really seen this written in a book before. This is something I kind of figured out, ways to use Excel just to be more productive and keep track of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Now, we're going to talk about another command that I think is probably one of the most important commands in the system. It's used for lots of different things. We're going to use it kind of throughout the day for various purposes. This is a command called the adjacent selection. So what you do is you select an area like just like we did a minute ago. I want to select another area over here that's not next to it, but it's kind of off to the side of it here. But you do that by holding the control key down. So you select your first area first, hold the control key down, and then select a second area over like this. Now when I start typing, Maybe I have a bunch of numbers to type in and a bunch of names. Here's my numbers, enter, number, 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 and then name, 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 name. And as I keep hitting my enter key, it's going to scroll back through the list. So what I did is I find it faster to type in number, 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 and then name, 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 rather than name, number, name, number, mm -hmm name, number, because I'm jumping back and forth on the keyboard, it slows me down a little bit. The reason why I don't want to do number, number, number is because I'm afraid I'm going to get misaligned. That's why you select them. So if I select five cells, I know that I'm only going to do five cells. Now, if you do it this way, if I type in here and I type in name, and I hit my tab key and then put in my number like this, when you hit your enter key, it actually takes you back to underneath the name. So there's my name, tab, my number, and then hit enter. See it? Then hit enter, and it drops back down there. So my name, tab, and then number, and enter. But sometimes it gets out of sequence. And so sometimes you have to grab your mouse and move it around. So there is ways to do it through just the keyboard command by typing the tab key and moving down to the lines here. But this is maybe if the things are off-center or something like this. The person of this JSON selection is really important because why? Let's say, for example, we want to select these items here, but I want this to be my top row. Well, if I click on this, I lose that selection. So if I select this and I grab Boston and I select this one, I lost that selection. So what you want to do is you want to select this area first, hold the control key down, and then click the top row like this, and then what you do is you can format. So I can come up to my little format tools here and say, well, I want to make this, you know, shaded like this. I want to make it bold. I want to make it a different color, maybe a different, a darker blue or maybe a yellow or something like that. But so I can format that at one time. So what you do is you select everything that you want to format to be the same type. So I might select this area, I might select this here, and this over here. And I want those to have the same font type. Then I would use my control key and select those various areas, and then I would simply click on my format tools to do that. That's going to save you some time. If you had to do this first, and then you formatted it, then you'd have to come over here and format this. That's extra work. And technically, I'm sort of a lazy person in a sense. I would prefer having Excel do all my work for me as much as possible. So I try to take whatever shortcut command I could use to do things a little quicker. Now we're going to talk about some keyboard commands.
These are, again, shortcut keys or ways to do things quicker. So here's some pretty common ones. If you don't know these, then this is, these are some you should memorize. Now, the way I've written this document is I have greater areas and white areas. The white areas are considered core concepts or the ones that I use the most. And technically, the white areas are the ones I use. And since I wrote the book, I can say whatever I think is most important, right? But these are things that I find to be very, very useful and very easy to use and something you should know because they're universal. Some of these commands up here, this bold, italics, underline, and strike through, these are things you're going to use in every program. So why not memorize some of these commands to make things a little easier? I also put the Mac keyboard, the, the equivalent command in here, if you're using the Mac. Okay, so those are some typical keyboard commands we could use. Let's go down to my next section here. This is called the manipulating data. So we're talking about the control Z, control Y, copy and paste capabilities, and then some fill down capabilities. Let me go back and demonstrate some of these so we can see how this works. I'm going to come back to my main sheet here, my happy face sheet, and I'm going to simply come over here and do some things. Now I'm going to use my keyboard commands to do all of this. So I'm going to start with my mouse. I click on October. Now I can use my up and down arrows like this. You see like this? To move this around. I'm using my arrows to move this around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a keyboard command. I'm going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard. And I'm going to use my arrows to select an area. So I can use my keyboard command by holding the shift key down and selecting an area this way. I can use my right arrow to select this area like this. So I can highlight that area totally with my keyboard, not even touching my mouse. Then I can simply do a copy, which is a control C, and it puts a little marquee around it. And then I can use my arrow keys again to move off to the right over here. And I can do a control V as in Victor, which is to paste that. Now, if I want to get rid of that little blinking marquee over there, I'm done with my operation, I would hit the escape key on the keyboard, and that would get rid of that marquee. So the idea of that is you can copy and paste something very quickly using your keyboard command. You don't have to do this. As a matter of fact, I can do this so quickly that people can stand over my shoulder and watch me work, and they don't even realize what happened. I would do something like this. I copy it, and I come over and paste it. And, they're going, and they go, well, how'd that stuff get out there? How did you do that? I didn't even see you grab the mouse. So the idea is I can do that very quickly using the keyboard, the shift command to select things, then the, the copy and the paste do that. I hit the escape key to get rid of the marquee. The other command you use, if you've ever used the undo command, up at the top of the menu here, there's an undo command right here. Everybody ever seen that before? You probably will never use the undo command again after I show you this next command. That's if you hold the control key down and you press your Z command as in zebra, that's your undo. It's much faster to do an undo using the control Z than it is to grab your mouse and go to the top. So hold the control key down, press the Z one time, and that will undo the previous operation. A related command is control Y. That is a redo. So that means if you do too many undos, you can do a redo to bring this stuff back. So your control Z is another one that's really useful here. The other one that I mentioned in the book just a minute ago, if you select an area like this, and I highlight the cell here, I can do a control D, which basically would just fill that down. So let me jump back over to the book. Here's your control Z, control Y, control X, control C, control V, and here's your D and here's your R. So those are just common commands that you should learn to use because they'll be a little quicker. A lot of keyboard commands in here. I've tried to find them all. Here's your arrow keys. We talked about the arrow keys moving around your, with your arrow keys. This is another really important one too. The control home and the control in and the control down arrows. And then you have to also have some shift arrows. So I'm going to run through a few of these. 
These are some selection keys. Control A, Control A A. Here's your shift arrow. We just talked about the shift arrow, right? And then you got a control shift. Let me just walk through a couple of these and see these how this works. So essentially we have one command we want to talk about is the home key. So if you hold the control key down and press the home key on the keyboard, it's usually in the upper right corner of the keyboard. That takes me to A1. If I hold the control, hit the end, E and D key, that takes me to the end of my database. So there's the end right there. See, so there's data was put in here. So I consider that to be the end of the database. So control home. So what happens a lot of times if I page down a little bit and I get kind of lost in my system down here and I want to go back to home, I would just do a control home and that would take me back. So that is the home and the end key kind of helps you to navigate quickly through the system. So there's a couple of keyboard commands that I think are really useful. Now let's put a couple of these things together. If you do a control down arrow, that actually jumps from group to group. So I'm jumping from group to group. I'm not actually going through every cell. It just jumps to the next group. See it like that? So let's put a couple of these commands together. If I hold the shift key down and the control key down, that selects all the way to the bottom of the group. And then if I do a right arrow, it actually selects it that way. If I click on District 2 and hold the shift and the control key down, I can select that entire group. So that's the idea of this using the control and the shift key down together. Now another one that's really important, say for example I want to select this entire database from District 1 all the way down to the bottom over here. If I would hit the control end key, that takes me to the bottom. But if I do a shift control end key, that actually selects all the way to the bottom. So you can actually select the very first cell of your database and then page the very bottom of the cell down at the bottom here and actually do a control shift end and it would actually select everything up to the end of the database. You can also click on the district one like this, come down to the bottom down wherever the bottom is, hold the shift key down and click and it selects everything between the two. I'm going to do a control home to get back. So there's a, there's a lot of keyboard commands I'm kind of showing you here. All of them are sort of written in here in some fashion or another. So here is your arrow keys. Here's your control home. Here's your control end. You might want to go back and practice these. Here's my control down arrow. And then the next section talks about the selection techniques, the shift arrow, the shift back arrow, shift down arrow. Then we talked about the control shift down arrow. So that's a sim series of combination. The control A is important and control A A. So again, I can go through this in greater detail, but this isn't really the core part of the class, but I think that it's important for you to have some keyboard commands and it's important to practice these. If I do a control A, that selects that regional area. If I click on this up here and I do a control A, that selects that region. So that's a quick way to select something. If I do a control A twice, control A, A, then it selects the entire sheet. If I didn't want to select that, I wanted to select just these two districts all the way to the end here, I could grab my mouse and drag it across like this, or I can click on District 1, hold the Shift key down, and click on the lower one. So I can click on the first one here, hold the Shift key down, and then click on where I want to select everything between, and it highlights everything between those two cells, to those locations. So that is just a little bit about the navigation capability and the keyboard command. Let's see what else we have in here. This here is the enter, the shift enters. So this is just a way to 
when you hit enter, it goes down one. A shift enter goes the other direction. I'll show you that. And the escape key we talked about several times. That uses to abort things. Down here are the, our file command. There's your control S, control O, control N, control P. Control S is your save. Pretty universal command. Control O is down here too that might be useful too that we can we can look at that all right so that's a little bit about the commands so this would just be if i hit the enter key a bunch of times like this and i went too far i can hold the shift enter and it takes me back if i had a tab key and i went out and i went too far I went to the end i can just hit the shift tab and it brings me back a couple so that's a little quicker than actually going over your mouse and moving around. So the idea that you can actually use your shift tab or shift enter to go the other direction. So there's a couple of little things like that are kind of useful. So I do encourage you to take a look at those keyboard commands, try to understand them so you can maybe get your hands on a little bit better.